everyone, welcome again. It's Raw Dr. Emma, and we have with us today Freddie. Hi guys, how Hello. are you doing? Wonderful, doing great, amazing. So we have our Dr. Dr. Emma has got, got us some nice veggie pizza, some nice habanero wings. Nice. We're about to eat and chat with you guys while she talked to us about another trauma segment. What, what do you have in mind for us today? Well. What we're going to talk about this time is we're going to interject the grief and loss in terms of trauma because it presents itself very different mm -hmm. than other types of traumas. There's no lesser or better as it relates to trauma, you all. It's all relative to the individual and what they're experiencing. Right. And one of the things that I do for treatment where that is concerned is I interject Kubler-Ross stages of death. Oh, wow. And that is because sometimes when death is so very final, you all, and there is no, um, I'm going to come back. No, the people are not going to come back. So what I heard something on the TV the other day that said, grief is love, just nowhere to go. Wow. And I thought it was so powerful oh. mm -hmm. that I was like, okay, I'm going to need to start integrating that when I'm doing the healing work with people that have survived the trauma when you've gone through so many different deaths. I know for myself... I had a mom to die one year, then the very next year, a baby sister, and then the very next year, two older sisters, and then almost a brush of death with myself with a heart attack at the end of that year. So if you would think in terms of that, my family members would have had to bury three aunts in one year, and the year before that, an aunt, and a year before that, a grandmother. Wow. So that sets the tone for how someone could be traumatized where yes. death is concerned. With grief. Yeah. Yes. And so, yeah, you're going to need to tie in the experts like Kubler-Ross, stages of death, DABDA, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance. DABDA. That's what I want to leave. That's the psycho ed piece for this segment. DABDA. Wow. DABDA. And if I tell you, like, how you spoke about the grief and, like, how you brought it in, and the way you said that people, ex some people expect that they're going to come back and they're not going to come back, it is very true because the last, my dog passed away, which is my child, mm -hmm. I brought him from a baby and I don't care what people say, it's for a baby, whatever, that's my, my connection, baby. he was my responsibility and everything. And he, he 11 years of my life, and mm -hmm. I, he, I, he took, I took care of him and he passed away in January and I'm, I know all what you're saying because I went through certain things, mm -hmm. but I made, I had this video, mom was recording me, and I touched him for the last time, mm -hmm. and I know I will never feel that beautiful fur again, or see him smile, come and lick me so gently again. Yes. And I will tell you all, people, I was battling with COVID when this happened, mm -hmm. and I understood that I was depressed. Mm -hmm. I had to recognize it for myself, because that week when he passed away, I said to, I, I, I would find myself crying all over the house. Uh, I would I would see him. Mm. I would feel him. Mm -hmm. I would know he's there. Not being there. Mm -hmm. And then it went on for another week, and I was like, by the third week, I was like, no, because that's a way. that before my dog passed away, before Ace passed away, his name is Ace. I stood up on my my closet door, and he's sitting there in pain, looking up at me. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him all the plans we have for this year. And that's what hurts. Mm -hmm. Is that he sat up there see. and wait till I go on the ground with him. He lay his on my lap and that's when he sat gasping for the spread. Mm -hmm. So I understand when you connect with grief. I mean, it's not the same as a human because mm -hmm. it's different, but it's a connection. Broken. And there you go. That's the word. Broken. Mm -hmm. I love how you tied in. How do you feel about that, Freddie? Yeah. Well, um, we're talking about grief. Um, yes. Grief, yes. So, um, it reminds me of my, of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, sh she was very close to me. Mm -hmm. My mother and my grandmother. Nice. Uh -huh. So, when she died, I was here in, mm -hmm. in New York. So, she was in Mexico. Oh. So, it was hard for me. To wow. Work because I didn't have the opportunity to say that I love her. Mm -hmm. Before. Yep. And I still remember her. In, mm -hmm. I never talk about it, but um, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, because it's hard. It's okay to talk about it too. Yeah. And with the grief, okay. and with the tears, we're allowed. Yeah. And I remember how the opportunity to say one more time that I love her. So yes. Much. 
people miss that like and some people have it right in front of them mm -hmm. and they will never come out and tell that person every day hey, you know I love you exactly. or make a little fun with them and have that smile that you see that they know back that's why I make jokes with my mom that I know when she smiles I know she good yes and she knows I'm bothering her because I love her and yes. I'll pester her because I love her Freddie I'm really sorry you had to go yes. through that mm -hmm. I have to connect with my mom again with a similar story that's why I like connecting the stories mm -hmm. my mom was in New York in 2010 and she had applied for her green card and everything and in July of 2010 my grandmother her mother passed away mm -hmm. and I was there and we that was like I'm telling you that some of the things that happens now we had already done it mm -hmm. like all these live streaming and thing we went on MSN with some shady internet and got my mom to video cast to see it from Trinidad to right. New York but as you say and you're talking about saying I love you she didn't get to see her mom for the last because mm -hmm. because of that green card not even to say goodbye but guess what that happened in July and the green card came in November mm -hmm. and it was a silly mistake I forgot to send in a document and mm -hmm. I live with that that's, so trauma, grief, and everything, you yes. tie it in. Yes. That's why when you ask someone, you question someone about being a narcissist, you can tell. Is Ra a narcissist? <laughs> exactly. You can't be no. feeling all these things. No. Like I tell you, you know. No. You could talk to someone and say this entire story, and that person has a blank on their face. He just said that, and I could feel his yes. pain. And that person will watch him and be like, oh, well, life happens. Mm. And there you go. That's a narcissist. And that's when the flag is waving. <laughs> Pay attention because your day is right around the corner. But what I want to add to that as a person that does treatment with the healing process of that, even in death, there is no tragedy without a triumph. So now you know what your grandma left for you is that you start telling the people that you love, you love them. So that you won't have to have to go, you won't ever have to go through that again if you just use what she left you. From her death, you know you wanted that last time to say I love you. So would it be just put in practice whenever you talk to one of your loved ones that you end it like that? Because then your story would shift to, I remember the last time I told Grandma I loved her. It would have been what you're going to adopt now. So any other person that's close to you, don't let that repeat itself. If you yes. love that person, exactly. start say, practicing saying it. You and I'm glad that I have you. Yes. Yeah. yes. But even so, like I, I, as I was saying, I do. Like the people that's close to my life yes. is when you hang up the phone. Before you hang up the phone, you tell them I love you. Yes. Or oh, just okay, love you. Talk to you later. Yes. That little putting it in there that mm. makes you know it could be that's love you. It might not, for someone listening to a conversation might hear. That fasting, love you, and it's like it doesn't sound real to them, but you know it sounds good. You have to say it. Yes. And that's the thing. That's when you connect with the people that you really care and love. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that is really heartbreaking to know that if you love someone so much and you connect with them on that depth where you have to hold that in, that means it really hurts you. Yes. Yeah. To, to yes. you know, and, and you should let go because I know she knows you love oh, her. Oh, she knew yeah. for sure. And, and loved you 50 times over. You know what I'm saying? That's just yeah. what grandmas do. It's like, yeah. and, and grandmas are very close to you. Mm -hmm. they, the first person that listened to you and has yes. something to say, they're there for you. Even against mamas. She was like that. She was like that. <laughs> yep. It's grandma that's going to really hear, hear, hear you, even in your wrong. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. She's going to understand. Exactly. I see why you did that, baby, but don't do that no like, more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. She, that's she what happens. Like that. yeah. <laughs> So Dr. Emma, give them a other, you, you talk to our Emmeranians and our Rastas and tell them to wrap it up about grief and then we go from there. Yes, the biggest thing about grief, you all, is that it presents itself differently for each person. Mm -hmm. um, grief is that thing that you don't get to understand until you're going through it. It's different when people used to say to me, um, oh, I know what it feels like. If you haven't lost your mom, you don't know what it feels like. So please stop saying that to mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't, don't say that to people. I don't want to have that feeling that you are in or to be in that position. That's something that you need to, to, to learn to say in your mind. You see an accident on the road, we slow down to say, oh, what happened? Yes. But I have one day you ever say, God, 
I don't want to be in that position. Right. Because when you're in that position, it's a whole chaos. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. You, it, it's, it's one thing to have gone through it yourself, but when those people who still have their mom there, it's almost in the beginning of grief, you get angry. Because you, you're sitting here telling me that you know how I feel, but your mom is alive and well. Yeah. And so that's something we can be sensitive to. Yeah. And the biggest thing with grief, you all, is when you're dealing with somebody with grief, stop trying to fix them. Yeah. They are entitled to their emotion. Whatever emotion that is happening, give freedom and offer. You don't have to be a therapist like me to offer human kindness. Yeah. Just sit there with them. Yeah. And the other key thing with grief, when it first happens, everybody's around. Check in on them. Mm. Week four, yes. week five, week six. Then give it a break. Loop back around four months later. Mm. Wow. Like that's when you're really uh, helping someone just by being there. And don't have expectations that they're ready to talk. You know, you, you didn't even want to talk at some point when you lost your baby. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I didn't talk to a lot of people. They were just calling me. I see the phone ringing. I know. Nope. I, I just like, I know that they, 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 they care about me. They yep. love me. Mm -hmm. But I don't but feel I, like it. I have to remember the story every single time I have to tell the story because I'm ret ret retracing what I did wrong. Yeah. Where I could have saved him. Within 20 minutes, yes. it was over. Time calling an emergency vet. Doing all this, it was over. Yes. And like, yes. if you have to go, always remember this. And I tell people this over and over. A person gets shot by a gun. A person gets hit by a car, dies by an accident, dies falling off a roof, an accident, any how death comes. That is the right moment and mm -hmm. time that you was meant to go and in the way it's supposed to happen as bad and as tragic as it is yes. we have to figure out how to accept that tragedy and yes. deal with that grief yes yes and if you and if you don't deal with tragedy you all it will deal with you yes. oh, it's a matter of living and existing do you want to live or do you just want to exist yeah, I love, love that. That's horrible, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, to decide to exist like, yep. and live. Yeah. 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 Well, well, we have someone living and, and coming out of their comfort zone and actually joining us on camera, yeah. which is a big step. So <laughs> thank you, Freddie, yeah. for joining yeah. us. Yeah. And, oh, wow. Thank you for sharing your grief. I mean, yes. I'm sure many of our Rastas and Emeranians will connect with the Floridians. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> just before we wrap up, Emma, remind them what, what you asked them to do for 21 days because this is a new segment. Yes, for 21 days I give you the challenge to do a self-affirmative statement to yourself. It can be something as simple as, I believe in my success. Mm. I will work towards my success because I am successful. I love Try it. it for 21 days. Don't say it doesn't work. Try it. Wow. Listen, believe in yourself, love yourself. This is Ra, Emma, Dr. Okay. Emma, and Freddie. Ask Miss Emma. Peace.